Hi everyone! Alright, so I'm gonna start off with a little introduction about this video, but if you want to skip all that and just see the actual recipe, click here to jump to it. But I'd recommend listening to my sensual voice for the introduction though, because, you know, there's some, there's some good info in my opinion. So, I'm pretty new to tarantula keeping, but one of the things I've learned about is food. And uh, just like with most things, uh, the better stuff you put into it, the better it's gonna be. So, this is about feeding your crickets or your roaches good stuff so that they in turn become good stuff to feed your tea. And I'm gonna use the term gut loading because it's, it's different from feeding. Even if it's not a term native to keeping tarantulas, because simply feeding prey items is just keeping them alive long enough to, to feed them to your critter. And, uh, you know, gut loading refers more to feeding them well. Uh, you know, it's bumping up their juiciness level, it's taking them to Thanksgiving dinner so they're nice and fat, and, you know, making them the Kobe beef for tarantulas. So, some people dislike the term though, because it's more of like a reptile thing, but I, I don't care, it's my video and that's what I'm gonna call it. Um, anyways, so I found this video here. Uh, it's about how to make wet gut load for crickets, and I really liked it. It made a lot of sense to me. It was a good recipe. It was low in calcium, which is one of the things I was looking for. Uh, the one thing I didn't like, however, was that this recipe just called for the mixture to simply be frozen in an ice cube tray and then later thawed for feeding. And I wasn't too keen on this because it would just go back to being a pasty, goopy mess and that would be a pain in the ass to clean. It might drown the crickets because, you know, they're ridiculously prone to it. Um, and then I remembered another video that I saw while I was researching feeder cricket care and gut loading, and it was just a bunch of crickets just going nuts over this little thing called an exoterra jelly pot. They loved it! They loved it. Not only was it pretty cute, it looked super efficient, it looks clean, you know, it, it didn't look like it would dry out like Fluker's orange cubes. Those are notorious for drying out, like, really fast, so I thought, wait a minute, I've made gel food for my goldfish before. It, it's, it's similar. It's similar to the one in the first video, and I could probably make it into a gel like the Exoterra Jelly Pot, so I'll just, you know, make this. So I'm gonna, the goal of this is that I'm gonna try to make a wet gel gut load that's nutritious and contains good moisture, optimized for prey items that'll be fed to tarantulas. And without further ado, uh, let's get to the actual recipe. Okay, so what I have here, I have some, um, I have this, like, janky apple that's just laying around. I, I, I don't know. I should use it for something, so I figure, why not the crickets? Um, so I have that. I have this sweet potato. This apple wants to run away from me here. Um, I have an orange. Just, you know, regular orange. I'm gonna cut that up, rinds and all. Um, I have some uh, red leaf lettuce, and I got some kale. Like, I've seen people say to use mustard greens and stuff, but I couldn't find any. But I could find kale, and kale's pretty nutritious. So, I figure might as well do that. Now because I'm gonna be trying to make like a wet gut load for tarantulas, I need to not have a ton of calcium in there. Because tarantulas, they um, if you give them too much calcium, they're gonna have a big problem molting when the time comes. Uh, that's why when you see videos of people feeding like mice and stuff to tarantulas, that I, I've heard that that is not the good thing here. So, I'm gonna chop these guys up and then I'll show you what to do next. All right, I got these. Uh, I got these nice and chopped up. I just want to make a couple quick notes um, for the apples. You know, I took the seeds out because uh, hmm, we shouldn't eat apple seeds. They're not good. Uh, you know. And then for the kale, I just like cut off the stems so it's mostly the leafy part. And then this was super cheap. Sweet potato, like a dollar. Apple, fifty cents. Orange, fifty cents. Uh, head of lettuce, a dollar twenty-nine. Kale, dollar twenty-nine. So this should be pretty affordable. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, just toss it all in the blender. Um, I'm gonna start with the fruits here because, you know, they're really bulky. They take up a lot of room. So we're gonna blend these down. Forgot to mention you should add some water. Help it blend up properly. Oh, uh, just eyeball it. You know, it doesn't matter too much. And once that's nice and soupy, see how much less space that takes up? Perfect. Add in your leafy greens and blend in the rest. And once you have this thick green paste that's like incredibly unappetizing, uh, you're ready for the next step, which is to add the gelatin. So for this next step, you want this unflavored gelatin that's like designed for desserts, but we're not using it for desserts, we're using it for crickets. Why would you use it for desserts when you could use it for crickets? So the first step here is to get some 
cold water. You want a cup of cold water and a metal mixing bowl. This one's not too big, it's just a small one. So, you know, pour that right in there. You should have four packets of this unflavored gelatin, and for this we're going to use all four because, I mean, let's face it, one just isn't enough. So we're just going to dump all four packets of this gelatin mixture in here, and then I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to mix it up so that it's, you know, blended in better, and then we're going to let it sit for like five minutes. I'll show you what it should look like after. You're waiting for that cold gelatin to set up and get all sturdy for you. Just boil like three more cups of water. Three more cups of water. Alright, so this looks approximately appropriate. It gets pretty thick. You know, kind of jelly-like. Looks like it would be fun to play with. So once it's like that, we get our boiling water. And uh, slowly pour this in here. Don't want to splash all over the place. Burn yourself because uh, that would suck. No one needs that. Perfecto. And then we're just going to start mixing this until it's all dissolved. Should look nice and clear, just like regular water. Maybe not like regular water, maybe like some variety of tea. It has like a faintly yellowish tinge to it. Anyways, um, I'm going to be a careful person and put this in with both of my hands. We're just going to add that to the, uh, the uh, vegetable and fruit mixture that we have in the blender still. My blender's looking pretty full, but that's fine. We're just going to blend this up nice and... Nice and smooth. And finally we're just gonna line a baking pan or a corningware or whatever the heck you have laying around. Line that with some saran wrap to make the demolding process easier. And then just pour it in there. And now that that's all taken care of, I'm gonna pop the lid on this one because this has a lid. You don't have to though, it doesn't matter. And then just throw that in the fridge overnight until it gets to be like some kind of disgusting vegetable jello cake. Six hours later. Alright, so fortunately, with some of the leftovers, I, I had a little bit too much for that big container. I poured it into this smaller container, uh, and fortunately it got settled way quicker, so I can just finish this up for you guys. Uh, if you can see, you can press into it pretty well. It's nice and jelly, comes out clean, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna like flip this over. I'll see if I can do it while I'm holding the camera. Let's challenge ourselves. Uh, no, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. Any <laughs> Anyways, you flip it over and then you like hold down on the saran wrap and then lift the thing up. And uh, that should- oh, wait. It came out. Oh, convenient. Haha, -ha, I was better after all. And then you just peel this off. Mmm. Appetizing. So what we're going to do is uh, we're just gonna like cut this into cubes and then we're gonna put it on a cookie sheet and put it in the freezer until those cubes freeze. And here are the gel cubes right before I put them in the freezer. I'm gonna take these out in a couple hours and then put them in a Tupperware for, uh, for long-term storage. You won't have to make food again for like a million years. These are gonna feed your crickets forever. And there you have it. You have your gel food all set up, ready to go. The reason that we froze these before we put them in here is so that, you know, you could pull them apart from each other. They wouldn't freeze together as badly, you know. And then all you should have to do to get these ready to serve is just run them under a little bit of cold water until they start to get squishy again. And then they should be well on their way to thawing at that point. So uh, hopefully this works out for me and hopefully for you too. Alright, just one more note before we finally wrap this up. Um, after asking around, I came to the conclusion that you should do a combination of wet and dry gut loading for prey items for tarantulas. Um, and for tarantulas specifically, many people have recommended chick feed to me because it's high in protein and fat. And you can pick that up in places like Ace Hardware or Murdoch's if you have those around. Um, a few options I've heard other than that are oatmeal, fish food flakes, Purina or Fluker's Cricket chow, dog kibble, uh, those are just some other options that I've heard of. As I said, I'm a novice tarantula keeper myself, and any advice or input or knowledge that you have to offer is totally welcome to me. Um, I just figured I'd share what I'm doing with everyone while I'm at it. Uh, even if it turns out to not be so great for crickets, especially for tarantula crickets or, or roaches, whatever you're doing. You can see my goldfish are pretty into this, so if there's interest, I'll do another video with a recipe more designed for goldfish gel food, because they do, they do benefit from, from slightly different things. 
Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you disagree with anything and why, if you have good information to share, if you tried my recipe yourself, how it worked for you, all that good stuff. And uh, I'd really appreciate a like if you found any of this helpful too. So that wraps it up. Uh, thank you again for watching and have a good day. Toodles!